Hey everyone, you're listening to Women Are the Journey with your hostess with the mostest. That's right, it's me, Audrey Groeschel. In the story of the shift, we're going to talk to women entrepreneurs as they share the story of the shifts along the road of their business journey. You'll get a peek behind the curtain of what is really happening along that bumpy road of business ownership. In the Chew On This segment, I'll be talking about my own journey in stepping into the feminine and my own sense of goddess in me. It's a journey of switchbacks and ups and downs with permission to be real and hopefully bring you along on the journey to step into your own goddess. Welcome. Oh my goodness, you guys are in for such a treat today. Today we have Lisa Baker, and not only is she just fun to talk to, which she seriously is, but the things that she has to say are just incredible. She's just so smart and puts so many different things together, and it's so much fun to listen to her do it. She talks about how language can shift how something happens for you, like changing how something is happening to me or something is happening for me or from but to and. It's awesome and so much fun to listen to. So let me tell you a little bit about her first. She's a health coach and sanity whisperer to underappreciated, underlistened to, undertaken care of, undervalued, overwhelmed, overworked, overscheduled, and over it all working wives and mothers who dream of a starring role in their own lives. She's a full-time integrative nutrition health coach. She's a self-published author, part-time consultant, and woefully underpaid COO of a busy family of four. Lisa adores her crazy life and brings her passion, knowledge, and experience to the table to help you love your life, crazy as it is, all without impossible diets, insane workout regimens, magic pills, silver bullets, and crazy detoxes. In the years BC, before children, she was the owner and executive chef of a catering and private chef company in Chicago, and she's taught cooking and nutrition to all ages. Lisa understands the value of nutrition, both the whole foods variety and the more holistic kind, and can show you how you can make the food and lifestyle choices that nourish you without adding more shoulds and hours to your already overwhelming schedule. Lisa lives with her husband in a half-empty nest in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and is passionate about health and happiness, education and exercise, soul food, S-O-L-E, and social justice. And on that note, enjoy Lisa. Hello, lovely peeps. This is Audrey Groeschel with today's Story of the Shift. We are welcoming in the lovely Lisa Baker. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you. Oh, I even get to be lovely. (laughs) Yes, you do. Excellent. You you are, darn it. (laughs) Um, I am thrilled to have you here, and I thank you so much for taking the time and for your willingness to share your story today. Thanks for having me. Well, let's get started, and let's start with, let's have you tell everybody where you're at right now. Where I'm at right now, I am an integrated nutrition health coach, and I'm actually going through a shift as we speak. Um, I was doing a lot of, (laughs) kind of cool, huh? I was doing a (laughs) lot of uh, hands-on nutrition and cooking classes and meal planning and things like that, and I am shifting my business away from that towards a much more holistic model. Cool. So uh, we can get more into that if you'd like, but um, that's basically what I'm working on right now is shifting from one sort of business to another. Awesome. Well, I will get more details as we get more detailed into yes. it. Let's get started with, let's go back to that moment where your crisis came and it set you on the path that you're on right now. Okay. Well, I... Uh, have many past lives <laughs> on this planet in this life, <laughs> um, probably some more in other places too. But um, I started out my life as a person who taught foreign languages. Um, my parents are both foreign language teachers. One was a linguist, and I just grew up thinking that's what I want to do, and that's what I'm going to go into. And I happened to be quite good at it, so. 
it just came really easily. And um, so I, I majored in Chinese. I had spoken Russian wow. growing up. Yeah, I had all these cool languages, you know. Wow. Um, so how many languages? I had to work for the government. <laughs> <laughs> how many languages do you actually speak? At this point, English on a good day. <laughs> um, I could probably speak Russian if I had to save my life, but usually when I open my mouth now, Chinese comes out because it's the more recent one. But um, yeah, so I started out teaching Mandarin Chinese and really loving it um, and then sort of hit a wall because I didn't want to specialize enough to um, get a PhD and go into sort of the upper echelon of academia. And I had watched my mom teach language. Uh, she taught Russian and she had a master's degree and had never gotten a PhD. So of course she was sort of relegated to the instructor positions and you know, for her entire life, she taught more classes than anybody else wow. and never had anything more than a yearly contract. Like they could have wow. let her go any, <laughs> you know, and it was interesting to, to watch that and realize that, wow, you know, she just, she never, she never had more than like five years of, of, uh, knowing that she was going to have work out in front of her until the very end of her career where they gave her a five year contract and then renewed it again. <laughs> wow. Um, so I sort of started thinking, hmm, I'm not really sure there's, this is what I want to be doing. And all of a sudden, it just came crashing down. I was like, oh, my God, I totally made the wrong decision. I should <laughs> never have gone into this. You know? <laughs> and then there was this moment where I was like, oh, interesting. Well, I guess I'll go back to something that just makes money for the meantime while I figure it out. And mm. that meant going back to waitressing, oh. which I had been in high school and college. Right. And it was Money, and I worked in some really cool places in Colorado and um, really started thinking about how like the science had been there all along. I had just sort of slid into this because it was what I was good at. It mm. was what my parents did. It was sort of what was acceptable. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was expected maybe. Yeah. And interestingly enough, I don't think my parents ever placed that uh, expectation on me. It was definitely an internal thing about, you know, being good and pleasing and meeting expectations. Right. <laughs> it was all self-induced. We're all really good at self-inducing those sorts of things for ourselves. <laughs> that aren't we? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So as I was waitressing, I, um, suddenly thought, you know, I don't want to be on the service side of the industry. I want to be on the making the food part of it. Mm. And so I, uh, by this point, I had I had met the guy who I was going to marry, and he was in academia, and we're like, well, we're not going to get hired in the same university, probably, and definitely not in the same department, so yeah. I should do something else to do. <laughs> so I looked around, I'm like, okay, well, catering, catering is really interesting, and uh, I loved, I worked for a caterer in Colorado and loved it, and then we moved to Chicago, and I thought, okay, this is it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to go to culinary school, I'm going to be a personal chef and a caterer, and and I did uh, for a few years, and then sort of the next sort of big crisis was, um, you know, crisis in a good sense was having kids <laughs> <laughs> and realizing that um, kids and catering clients need you the same times. They need you nights. They need you weekends. They need you holidays, and yes. you just you put those two things together. Yeah. Um, it sort of came to a head when I was um, – doing a fair amount of catering and I had five employees, three of them were full time and, wow. um, yeah. And I just reached a point where it became very clear that we were either going to have to sink some serious money, uh, into the business and really, I, I mean, I was legit to some degree, but you know, I was renting right. a, a kitchen rather than a commercial kitchen. I did, ah. I was using my car. I was, you know, sort of patching together a staff. Right. And so it was, we either have to go big or go home and just crushingly <laughs> decided to go home. <laughs> wow. How long did it take you to like come to this decision? Um, this was one of the crises that sort of snuck up and really mm. just pulled me over. You okay. know? Um, and really, uh, I would say it was, it was probably building for about a year, but not it, it didn't really sort of surface for real as okay we need to make this decision now right, right. 
it, that escalated very quickly. And, um, you know, again, there's a lot of, uh, internalizing of messages that may or may not have been put out there. Yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of like, Oh my God, I just completely failed at that. And mm. I should have been more successful. I should have made mm. it work. And, you know, and uh, to one extent it was working, you know, I had staff and right. I was, I had clients and I was doing it. And at the same time, it was like I was paying my staff and not taking a salary myself. <laughs> oh, that's no good. The potential is there and something else needs to happen to take it to the next level. And, mm-hmm. you know, walking away from that was just horrific. It was such an impossible situation. <laughs> um, and it, it sort of came at a moment where I was like, okay, well, screw it. I'm going to just do nine to five work that I don't have to take home with myself and, uh, moved into doing, uh, office administration kind of work. I was a uh, parish administrator for a while at a church in Chicago. And then, uh, my husband and I moved to California and I worked there for a, a university professor who needed an assistant. And so, you know, it was, quite a few years of, of doing jobs, but not having a career. Yeah. Uh, did and... that, what did that do for you? <laughs> well, it's funny you say that because there's a lot of, a lot of thinking in my mind about what does it do for you and what does it do to you? <laughs> um, and that's what I talk about a lot with clients, like, you know, how you look at something mm-hmm. it can be very, there's a very subtle shift that happens there. If you start thinking like, what is this doing for me? And what is this doing to me? And, um, it's almost as easy to make it a very simple, like, Oh, this is happening for me because blah, blah, blah. And sort of do like this spiritual bypass on it. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, it's almost as easy to do that as, as it is to play the victim. Like, oh, my God, this is killing me. This yes. is soul crushing. I hate this. Yeah. I'm a miserable person. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, so there's – there's to really think about what it's doing for you takes a long time. You can't just yeah. bypass your way to it. Um, and I remember whether we were talking about this. I think we were talking about this before we started recording, but how I look back now and – I think, wow, every single job that I've ever done has fed into what I do now in a very interesting way. And you know, <laughs> if I did not have that, yeah. you know, that's where it comes where you think about what is this done for me. So, you know, right. my experience as teaching, as teaching language, at teaching language was like, you know, I've, I'm a teacher. I can comfortably right. talk in front of people, I can do group things. And so, you know, everything has its little thread that plays into it, Right. Um, you know, because an entrepreneur it's like well I have plenty of experience in administration I've done a little bit counting and bookkeeping <laughs> kind of stuff you know yep. it's all there right it all the little be... pieces that fit together yeah yeah it really is like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle coming together um but when you're going through it it doesn't feel that way no it sort of feels I am wasting my life here and yeah. I am dying inside yes <laughs> Yeah, I, I think one of the I think one of the other questions that always seems to come up for me in this moment is who am I being during these mm-hmm. moments? Mm-hmm. And and am I being me? Right. And it takes a long time to get to that point where you can really solidly answer that question about yourself with yourself. Yes. Yeah. And I think. It really is. I, I I read an article a long time ago about the teenage brain and, hmm. you know, saying how as a parent, you just want to take everything that you learned and just deposit it into your child's brain. Absolutely. Because then they wouldn't have to do the stupid stuff and they would <laughs> just believe you. you know, but they don't learn that way was the thrust of that article was like, they need to go through it. They need to make the bad choices in order for those neurons to connect in the right way. Absolutely. You know? um, yeah. And it really, like, I think back on that now and I'm just like, wow, you know, I'm 52 and, and I'm finally figuring out who I am. Yeah. <laughs> so like All the, you know, 20 year old kids who are just like, oh, I got to go find myself. It's like, no, you got to live and then you'll find yourself. <laughs> got to have a little more experience. The journey is what helps you find yourself. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, so, um, yeah, so that's where I was with you know, doing jobs and then uh, feeling like it was a, always a job and not a career. You yeah. know, when you're that the tag along, else, I think that that looms pretty large. Yeah, um, I was 
infinitely more portable. So it was kind of like, well, I could probably find a job anywhere. Right. Um, was that job exciting and fulfilling? Not necessarily. Did it get me where I needed to be? Probably. <laughs> well, I, I guess the question would be like, what about it came for you that, that you couldn't do this anymore? Mm. Well, I, I always like to joke that like the change caused the shift. Ah, <laughs> like, that's hitting, awesome. Hitting uh, probably around 45. To, yeah, around 45. Just suddenly hitting this place where I was like, enough. <laughs> I am done with this. <laughs> there was a lot of really sort of unexplained rage and, and just anger and mm. and I would look at myself and be just like my god this is not me I've always been such a good person and now I'm this <laughs> terrible person <laughs> um, just really like I'm not being the kind of mom I want to be I'm definitely not the kind of wife I want to be yeah. and you know, what the heck is going on with me? And very slowly coming to the realization that, oh, this is, this is what's happening. This, you know, you know, you could blame it on the hormones, but that doesn't change anything. (laughs) So, right. I mean, you're still living your life hormones or not. Yes, exactly. And you have to live it. And, you know, just had this sort of crashing moment where my husband was out of the country and I was sitting, you know, this area well, the 110 freeway. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm sitting on the side of it just, like, weeping. I'm thinking, what the heck? Like, what is going on with me? (laughs) I have kids 15 miles away that I need to pick up from school, and I just got to pull my shit together, and it's not happening. Wow. Um, Yeah, just this real, uh, that was probably the, 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 the peak of the crisis where I just thought, oh, my God. Somebody had better come and take my kids away from me because I'm <laughs> going to do them some serious harm, or I'm going to do something to me. And I just thought, this is not me. Yeah. And you know, going through a, a very weepy sort of period and thinking, what the heck? And basically, just in desperation, going online and being just like, ah, what am I doing? <laughs> and finding some some interesting websites, and and you know, I'm a hopeless oh now the dog's gonna play with his squeaky toy um some some books and resources that just i'm I'm a perennial student and i could just take classes forever so (laughs) so i just happened to come across some interesting things about nutrition and i had taken nutrition as a as a culinary student but just the very much you know usda version of it right and um thought, well, you know, that's really not doing it. And I'm, I'm eating the way I should be. So it can't be that. So um, <laughs> just really starting to think about, you know, what, what can I shift in my life that will help me become a healthier, better person? Um, and, you know, I use the word better in, in quotes there. <laughs> right, of course. And, and uh, finding, finding a more uh, whole foods sort of nutrition definitely helped me a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm starting to read about you know what you can do to balance your hormones naturally, like yoga poses and exercise mm. and food and uh, yeah. stuff like that, that that really helped. And um, that sort of set me on a path towards, uh, you know, <laughs> food is definitely important and I want to go back to it, uh, but I'm not quite sure how to do that. So huh. when we moved to uh, Michigan, my husband said, you know, I, I've sort of figured it out and you can take a year and you can think about what you really want to do. Cause like, oh. you know, it's time, <laughs> time to grow up and figure out what you want to do when you grow up. Oh my gosh. How awesome. It was awesome. And, um, I ended up taking a job only a few months later because I had thought, Oh, I'm going to take a whole year. And, I'll, and then this job showed up and I, I literally spent a week trying to talk myself out of it. <laughs> then I thought, you know, if this job were showing up on my desk 10 months from now, I would be jumping at it. So why am I not? You know? Right. At, um, that was a job for a nonprofit where I learned how to write grants and mm. things like that. And it was just great. I still contract for them. But uh, cool. they've been really good in the sense that they've always 
made room for me to ship things as I wanted to. And, you know, How I awesome. go to them and be like, yeah, I'm not feeling the love anymore. I think I want to move on. <laughs> They'd be like, okay, so what do you want to do? What would keep you here? <laughs> which, That's awesome. Yeah, which is an amazing situation to be in. Yeah. And so the nonprofit works really at the intersection of like food systems, social justice, uh, sustainable agriculture. And so it was a way to get back into food from a completely different angle, like just sort of looking at, okay, so yes, it's important that we all have good food and, and, you know, let's not worry too much about the quote unquote foodie movement as Mm. available only to the upper crusties, Um, you know, farmer's markets. I like that. And yeah, it's really an amazing nonprofit. Um, and so it was a nice way to get back into food. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought, yeah, food is important and there's more to it. So that's yeah. where you find me now, which is the shift between, you know, teaching culinary, you know, cooking classes, which very often turn into these um, cooking as entertainment. Like I want to get together with a friends and have a glass of wine and make Mexican food and then I'll never make the recipes again and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that those are great they're a social activity entertainment right. but mine was very much focused on cooking as education like cooking is a life skill because yeah. only by getting back into the kitchen and using whole ingredients are you going to do anything seriously important for your health it's so true And so I spent a year, uh, I I actually went back from, I was working full time for the nonprofit and they were at a sort of inflection point where they brought on a new COO and things were changing. And I, again, I was sort of like antsy and thinking, huh, I really think I want, there's something else I want to do. So I signed up for this um, integrative nutrition course online and got certified as a health coach. And it just coincided with this COO coming on and I was like okay if I'm going to make this work I I can't be working (laughs) full-time so I went back to part-time contractor status and I'm still doing that and health coaching so um, yeah it's been an interesting journey (laughs) a long one yeah but that's okay because that's our lives are the journey and I I actually spent the first year so I went back to part-time contractor status um, in January of 2016, and I spent the entire year working on a cookbook because I uh-huh. like it, like it was there. It had to be done, and it was sort of my goodbye to that part of my life. Um, and huh. it's also, if you'll pardon the pun, the entree for a lot of people into my work because they come, <laughs> <laughs> they come to like me that. as, as um, you know, they want to know what they can do to their diet. Yeah. What, can do to their food that they're eating to improve their health and it's really just a way it's sort of the way to bring them into okay you know I can help you here's a book here's how you meal plan and then we can talk more about okay you've gotten that part of your life sorted let's talk about what else needs work um so it's it's all it's all part of the same puzzle I think um and that's where I am I'm making the shift right now from goodbye to hands-on cooking classes and hello to a lot more um, like online group coaching work and one-on-one coaching work. And that's what I'm doing. That's great. So this is a really interesting way of like your story really illustrates the, I don't want to say up and down, but the, the switchbacks and the curves around and the coming back to like something you originally did, but but actually doing something, putting a different spin on it. Looking at it through a different lens. Yes. Uh, we're looking at it with a completely different focus because of what I've been doing in the meantime. Right. And I, I think that that's one of the things that so few of us actually pay attention to. And because we think that one job doesn't necessarily lead to the next job or the next, <laughs> abil- it's like the, the next iteration of who you are as a businesswoman. Right. So we were joking at one point, you know, if, if you look at my resume as it, <laughs> as it is, if I were to write out my resume the way it really is and like not yeah. for a certain kind of job, Right. Like this woman is completely unemployable. Like what the heck? Is the <laughs> so we were joking. Like if you looked at my resume, I would be super qualified to be the administrator of a culinary school that focused on Chinese cooking. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so when you think about it that way, it's like, okay, so that doesn't exist. <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you could make it exist if you wanted to. But... Start the school, then become the administrator. But um, right. one of the best pieces of advice I got, and I think this works for not just entrepreneurs, but and, I mean, it works for entrepreneurs as well as people going out into the workforce for the full time, first time, um, is somebody told me, you know, someone from the career counseling office at the college I went to said, don't think of yourself as someone who has majored in uh, don't think of yourself as, uh, you know, an X major. Think of yourself as someone who majored in X. So as a Chinese major, hmm. you're very limited. Like, what are you going to yeah. do as a Chinese major? But yeah. as someone who majored in Chinese, you suddenly can bring in all the rest of those skills. Like, what did you have to be able to do in order to learn Chinese? Absolutely. Okay, so I had to, like, do a lot of memorization. I had to, you know... Be willing to pick up and move halfway around the world. <laughs> so it, it, when you start thinking about that, then it's much easier to think about, oh, this is what I could do, rather than really limiting yourself to, oh, I'm a Chinese major, I have to do something with Chinese. I love that. I think that is a brilliant, <laughs> brilliant way of looking at things. Because I think that so many of us get so attached to that thing. Yeah. Like for you, the Chinese. Mm -hmm. So I majored in Chinese. Well, great. I teach. <laughs> yeah. What? What do I? Yeah. That's it. Yep. And I. And you know, it's I especially a lot with the kids today taking these majoring in in things that you don't necessarily get a job in. Yeah. yeah. Which is unfortunate because they seem to be going to school to be able to go get a job. Right. Um, but then they major in something that isn't an employable type of thing, and then they don't know what to do, and they're working at Starbucks. <laughs> well, you know, I've heard that Ann Arbor, where we live, is like the the capital of completely, like, all the PhDs are baristas, you know? <laughs> 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 here they get their PhD. They like it here so much that they want to stay, but there's nothing for them to do, so they become a barista. Oh, my gosh. That's so, it's a lot so of PhDs amazing. Of baristas here. <laughs> Yes. And that, and maybe what they need, they need to talk to you just to hear that, yes. you know, yeah. that little bit of information right there. <laughs> I, Cause I think that's brilliant. It is brilliant. You aren't, you aren't who you, you aren't who you or aren't what, what you, you right. You are you aren't the what you, total of everything you had to do in order to yes. be successful in that major. Yes, absolutely. And I have a resume like yours in that <laughs> sense that, you know, if you, if I looked at an honest resume of what I've done, pfft, <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know what it would piece together as. I, I, mean, wonder, <laughs> I, I often wonder about like if you were to look at entrepreneurs, especially, you know, solopreneurs, the small business people, I wonder yeah. how many of us actually have a resume that looks like that. And I wonder how much of oh. it is our lives sort of teaching us that, you know, you do this and you do that and then you change yeah. to this and then you change to that. And why aren't you happy doing that? You know, right. yeah, it's sort of like the message is there all along. We're just not listening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I, and I think that that's the main focus for this podcast mm -hmm. is, is helping women to realize that all of us have, I think that this is very true that we all have that. And, and you're not the only person that I've heard that got the degree and then didn't do what the degree said to do. Right. You know, I think about my poor parents. They're like, you know, they paid for the degree, and then <laughs> they paid for culinary school. And I'm technically not using either of those. You know? <laughs> I always tell my mom, I'm like, you know, the degree got me a great husband. <laughs> <laughs> so. But that's just it: is that you wouldn't be who you are and where you are without all of that behind you. Exactly. Yeah. You know. That journey is what brought you to this spot. Yeah. And the sooner you realize that, you know, what you need to be doing is not just living the journey, but observing it from outside. Like, oh, uh, that the I wonder truth. where that's going to take me. <laughs> yes. And I think that that's one of those really awesome things where if you're in the midst of a crisis, is being able to step back and say, what am I, what am I needing to see in this? Mm -hmm. What am I missing? Yeah. Yeah, And I, you know, I had a moment this week where I don't remember exactly what happened, but it was that, that knee jerk reaction would have been, 
I'm a bad person. You know, that, that whole, Mm -hmm. I've done this wrong. I failed miserably. And what actually happened was it was like, I had a blank screen in my head and those lines, those, those sentences scrolled across and I was able to look at it and go, Oh, look, it's this situation. And there those words are, and they're absolutely meaningless to me now. Yeah. Yeah. And it was brilliant to be able to say, Oh my gosh. And it, and it's a huge part of stepping back from that and observing Mm -hmm. instead of being wound into and unable to disentangle yourself from the emotions and the crisis of that moment. Right. Yeah, it's exactly, it's, it's like Victor Frankl says, you know, between stimulus and response, there's this space, yeah. and, you know, in that space is your power to choose how you're going to respond to it. Like you can choose to totally react or you can choose to stop and say, huh, let me just get curious about that. Let me, let me think about it. Let me look at it before I just jump to something. Yeah. I think one of the best pieces of advice I ever got was from a parenting book I read when my oldest was 10. Mm -hmm. So this was almost 25 years ago for crying out loud. (laughs) But um, it basically said, you don't have to give an answer. Yes. If they come to you and say, (laughs) can I go spend the night at my friends? Mm -hmm. You don't have to say yes or no at that second. Mm Mm-hmm. You, you don't do anything. It doesn't lessen your credibility as a parent to say, give me a minute to think about it yep. and I'll get back to you. Yeah. Or let's talk about it or yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's really about parenting ourselves. <laughs> I know, I know. And I, and the thing is, what's funny is that I've used that everywhere in my life since that moment. Yeah. I need a minute. Mm-hmm. Give me a second to think about it. And our world is so snappy and, you know, 140 characters and you got to come back with something fast. And you're amazed when someone doesn't text you right back. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I, you don't need that. Mm-hmm. Give them a moment and give, actually give yourself a moment. Right. You know, you don't have to do it. Mm-hmm. And I love that. I think that that's everything that you've been talking about is you have, it sounds to me like you have, I don't want to say waited it out, but you have accepted the experiences and then done some analysis and then moved into. Yeah. And I think as, as I get older, it's easier and easier to see those experiences coming. It's like you can mm. see something coming and you actually, if you're super in tune with yourself, it's sort of like I was talking about with working for this nonprofit. It was kind of like, okay, this isn't feeling good anymore. And instead of right. sitting there and being like, God, my job sucks. You, know, <laughs> you start thinking, huh, I wonder why that is. Like, what could I be doing here that would be more fulfilling? Or why am I feeling antsy? Or you know, just right. starting to feel into like your body knows what's coming. Your mind actually yeah. knows what's coming before it comes. And you just yes. have to really listen. And I think that's that's something that we're not used to. I, I talk a lot about that in my blogging and also with, with clients. Just we are so used to looking outside ourselves for yes. the answer, the solution, the fix. And we've stopped listening to what what our body or our, our minds are, like our little inner voice, that little quiet voice is just like, no, yes. this isn't right for you. Okay, so let's get into what is your best advice for other women on their journeys? I mean, we've just talked about a lot of advice, but I want to know what is your, what do you think your best advice is? Well, I think besides taking that pause, besides just, whoa, okay, something's happening here and it's big and I'm not going to react to Mm -hmm. it. I'm going to let it happen I'm going to sit there and think about it. I'm going to sit with it even if it hurts. I'm going to sit with it even if it's uncomfortable. Mm. And then I'm going to get curious about it. And then I'm going to start looking at it from different ways. Um, And I think that a lot of times the the changes that we make have to be super subtle, super small. Um, Mm. So for me, a lot of times I'm a very sort of verbal person. Um, it takes looking at language and thinking, there's that language. Yeah. <laughs> um, thinking about 
how how a really small shift in language can change your perspective on something. Mm. So we talked about like, why is this happening for me? And why is this happening to me? Two very different feelings. Yes. If something's happening for you, it's like, okay, this is a positive experience. If something's happening to you, it's like, oh, poor me. Yes. <laughs> right? The victim mentality. Yeah. Um, so other small language shifts are things like um, the word but <laughs> and the word and you talked about, you know, how a parenting book gave you this revelation. Well, I got this revelation from a parenting book also. <laughs> and it recently become a thing. There's the yes and yes. sort of move yes. in business. Yes. Um, I came across this in a very old, probably from the 70s, parenting book. And they said, you know, if you tell your child, I love you, but you're really making me angry. You've just erased everything you put in front yep. of but. So anytime you say something and then the word but comes out of your mouth, everything in front of it has just been negated. Yep. And so if you can say, you know, I really love you and you're making me crazy, <laughs> the two things exist at the same yeah. time. And there doesn't have to be this black and white, yep. right and wrong. And not but. I love it. And not but. I yeah. <laughs> love it. And the other one that really helps a lot is uh shifting from i have to do something to i get to yeah. do something and this really can become again like a spiritual bike <laughs> yeah pass. it can be sort of like oh you know very snarky oh i get to do <laughs> but, but really i i was thinking about it when i was driving my son to camp and it's like a 12-hour drive Oof. and it's just like oh my god i have to drive 12 hours and all of a sudden like just shifting it to, oh, I get to spend 12 hours in the car with this kid and he's amazing Aww. and he's so, and we never get to spend time together. And, you know, we get to listen to books together. Awesome. <laughs> and just that really small language shifts like that, that constantly move us to a different yeah. place where I think it becomes easier and easier to see those crises coming. That's brilliant. I love how, I love how you fit language back into that. <laughs> Full circle. I know, right? I, it's amazing how that works. I love it. Absolutely love yeah. it. I'll tell you what, that just popped into my head as I was talking to you. I'm like, oh, huh, we're back at language. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love it more than I can even say. That is that's absolutely right. brilliant because that's, I mean, we do. We keep, we, it's not even so much that we circle back. It's that the road, it's like we pass by it again. We're not stopping at the same, we're not stopping at the same spot that we were at, but we pass by it and go, oh, look, there it is again. There it, there is, it again. is again. Yeah. And I think it was, I think it was Danielle Laporte who talked about this, who said, you know, you'll, you'll find yourself in the same crazy making crisis, the, the, the situation that you're like, why am I still like, I'm back here yeah. again? Really? Yeah. And at the same time, every time you revisit it, you're a different person. Yeah. Like, and, you know, this may come up for you again, and you can look at it through a different lens because you now have a different experience. Yep. Everything offers you, it's just one more layer of the onion peeled back. That's all. <laughs> yep. I'd love them. Yep. I, it's, I, and it's the onion is the perfect because it makes you cry. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yep. <laughs> it's just the way it works. Oh, dang it. Well, Lisa, this has been an absolute pleasure. I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed our time together. It has been brilliant. This has been a blast. I'm so glad that you enjoyed as well. And now I want to give you the best part of all. Plug your biz. Tell us about your biz. Tell us how women can contact you, um, who you're looking for, who would really want to talk to you. Who wants to talk to me? Okay. Um, I, I'm sure nobody knows anybody like this, but um, I work <laughs> I work with women mostly over 40 uh, who feel like the only way out of their overwhelm involves a lot of cash, a plane ticket, and a change of identity. <laughs> it's like, that's the only way they're getting out of this alive. <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> done that. Too bad you didn't know me then. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so my work really, well, the way I look at my work is I really am helping women to identify and interrupt those patterns that are just making them more overwhelmed. And a lot of it has to do with language. <laughs> um, 
have some really simple exercises that I, I do in a six week program. And I ask them to just add like, I know you're busy. I get it. I'm not going to ask you to like journal. I'm not going to ask you to do tons of workouts or change your diet or anything like that. It's like, I want you to just like spend a week thinking about every time you say yes to something and just make a note of it. Like who asked you something and you said, yeah, without even thinking about it. And let's look at it at the end of the week and talk about like, should this have been a yes? Uh, Because if it's not a hell yes, it should be a no. Yeah. (laughs) Um, and you know, you want to know why your schedule is so crazy. Well, let's take a look at how many times you said yes this week to things you didn't have to say yes yeah. to. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's super simple that, you know, it's a, it's a six week program. And then, um, if most of the time women, they know what they should be doing to take care of themselves yeah. and they're not. And the biggest excuse I hear is uh, I would do it if I had time. And so my introductory work is really let's take six weeks and let's put you in a place where you can declutter your day timer and uh, like detox your, your schedule and find, you know, commit to time that's going to be spent on you. And then from there, I have longer programs where people can really take a look at what diet and lifestyle choices they're making on a regular basis that should be shifted a little bit. Awesome. Yeah. And where do they, where do they end up at the end of their time with you? happy, healthy, living the life that they thought, oh, I'll never get there. (laughs) So they don't, so they don't feel like they need to, to buy the ticket and disappear anymore. (laughs) (laughs) No, they really start to think about this, like these couple decades of their lives as like, you know, popular belief is like menopause sucks. And the the way to, to look at it as, wow, I am not only healthier than I've ever been I'm happier than I've ever been it's not something you associate with that stage of love it that's brilliant now how can we buy your cookbook oh how can you buy my cookbook well you can go on my website (laughs) and go to the shop tag the shop tab and yeah so my website is simply and then a hyphen healthcoaching.com and there is a shop section and you go there and you click on books and you will see what you can get. There. Awesome. Yeah. There's an online course that goes along with it. Cool. Or stands alone. Cool. So you can do that too. Look at you go. You've just got so many offerings. Well, everybody's just going to have to go take a look and see what Lisa can offer because, oh my gosh, does she have a lot to offer? I mean, come on. Did, did you not just hear what we all just talked about? Come on. <laughs> All right. Join us. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that is it for today. Again, Lisa, thank you so much for being here. It was a wonderful experience. I absolutely loved your story. And I look forward to seeing what happens for you next. Yes. The shift. It's happening. Yep. Amen to that. Thank goodness, actually. I'm so glad we have them. Or else our life yep. would never be better. We, no, exactly. we would never be who no. we're meant to be. It'd be yeah. boring. <laughs> no. No good. No good. All right, then. And that is it for today. And thank you, everyone, for being here. And remember to push that subscribe button. And I will be talking to you again soon. Was I right or what? Was that a treat? Come on. Of course it was. Lisa was amazing. So this week... To get into the super secret goddesses inner circle on Facebook, where you can come and talk about all of our podcasts and anything that you want to talk about for that matter. The super secret password for this week is going to be sanity whisperer, just because I like it. (laughs) Sanity whisperer is this week's super secret password. Hopefully we'll see you in group. I would love to have that conversation with you. Whatever you want to talk about, I am down for And I'll be talking to you on the other side. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. Leave me a comment, give me a like, and if you really enjoyed it, or even if you didn't, hit that subscribe button and share it with your friends. You can follow me on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher at Women Are The Journey. Thanks for tuning in and catch you on the other side.